Okay, Michael also asks, why intellectuals often, whoops, that slipped. Why intellectuals often so much more evil than the general population? Well, because, I mean, because they're intellectual, you know, and evil has to do with the use of your mind. And what they are trained to do, what they're encouraged to do, what they're incentivized to do in academia is to evade and rationalize and trivialize knowledge that is focused on irrelevancies. And, the, and actually the penalty for thinking and, and, and actually acknowledging reality and engaging with reality is pretty severe in the intellectual world. So there's a huge incentive to, uh, to, to, you know, incentive in quotes, because it's, it still hurts you, uh, it, it, to, to evade, to play the game, if you will, right? Um, I also think that academia trains them to do that. Well, Leonard Peikoff always said, uh, you know, the, the a PhD is a guarantee to being stupid in a sense, but it's, it's not stupid. It's, it trains you to evade, it trains you to rationalize, it trains you, trains you to ignore reality. You know, in, in much of economics and finance, and it trains you in statistics and just statistics and just complicated statistics and massive statistics, and you forget the actual content, what's actually going on out there that is of importance. Um, so, you know, that's why I think intellectuals are more evil. But again, they're evil because of that evasion, the evil because of the rationalization. And of course, most people don't evade as much because they don't have access to as much information. Intellectuals have no excuses. Intellectuals have access to information about what's really going on in the world. A lot of people, regular people, don't know. I mean, I don't blame regular people for the way they vote or the way they think as much because they don't know. Um, I mean, they're told by the intellectuals all this crap. They don't have enough experience. They don't have enough knowledge. They haven't been trained to be critical thinkers. And, and they're, they're kind of impotent, and, and it's sad. I mean, Ayn Rand, in one of her essays, I think in Capitalism and Unknown Ideal, talks about the, you know, the, the, the young girl having a job, just trying to make a living, or the housewife trying to trying to spend money frugally and put, you know, use the money they have uh, consistently. And then she sees how millionaires live. And then she's told by all the intellectuals that millionaires exploit the people. And she is struggling because of the millionaires. And it's hard for her to, 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 to have the perspective of billionaires create jobs, billionaires deploy their money, you know, all the benefits that I always talk about what millionaires and billionaires do, it's hard to have that perspective. If, you're not, if you don't have the time to think about it, and if you don't have the information, the knowledge, the economic knowledge, the, the, the historical knowledge about what actually happens and what actually goes on. So it, it's not super surprising that the common person is the way they are. They are. And, and, and they, they, they're not, in that sense, evil. They're just, it's just, it's just unfortunate. They're misinformed. And this is why the role of the intellectual is so crucial in our culture. And we will never have a more rational culture until our intellectuals are better, until we replace the intellectuals, until we fire them and, and put better people in charge. And of course, the people who go to intellectual careers, particularly the ones who go to careers as public intellectuals, again, not all of them, but some of them, are power lusters. They're the elves with twoies of the world. They're the people who want to control the simple people, the ordinary people who can't really hold these vast ideas. And they want to control them. They want to have power over them. And that's what makes them so evil. So, no, I blame the intellectuals for everything. For everything. People blame the media. Well, the media is just a product of the intellectuals. People blame politics. Politics is just a product of the intellectuals. The intellectuals are everything. And that's why the most important thing we can do is replace them, challenge them, question them, 
and, and, and this is why, if I can self-promote, this is why supporting somebody like me or somebody like Alex Epstein or, or some of the better intellectuals in the, in the, in the dark, uh, what's it called, the uh, intellectual dark web or, or, or Dave Rubin or anybody like that, why well, it's so important to support us because we provide that alternative intellectual voice. A culture has to have intellectuals. A culture is shaped by its intellectuals. If we cede the ground to the conventional intellectuals, we get the culture that we have today. We get a horrible, evil culture. If we cede the ground to them, we get evil. We get evil controlling our culture. So why it's so crucial for you to support the Ayn Rand Institute, why it's so uh, support the Ayn Rand Institute significantly, because it trains future intellectuals. And why it's so crucial for you to support those intellectuals who are fighting on your side is because of how crucial intellectuals are. It's not just I'm supporting somebody. I'm supporting the people who shape the world. And if you support, it's either you get to have a say in who gets to shape the world, by supporting them, by giving them a voice, by, 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 you know, amplifying their voice, or somebody else does. Universities do. The, the, the think tanks of the world do, who hire these people. Or, you know, the, the supporters of those intellectuals who are really, really bad. You know, Marx was an intellectual supported by the heir of a businessman, Engels, right? Intellectuals have always been supported, the good and the bad ones. Some, like Ayn Rand, didn't need that support because they wrote novels and made a fortune. But most intellectuals need to be supported. And I'm not just talking about financially, I'm talking about amplifying the voice, sharing and, 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 and repeating and using their talking points in your conversations. 